Hi there. Welcome to Book and Paper Arts. You're probably thinking, I don't sound like Kelly. And you're right. I'm Catherine. Welcome. I'm from Catherine Brown Artisan Journals. Over here in Canada, I have the great good fortune of being one of the guest hosts here on Kelly's channel while she's away for a little bit. And I'm really happy to have the opportunity today to show you a little bit of what I do. Because similar to Kelly, I like working with old and unusual books. But I'm a little bit different in what I do with my old, unusual books. I like to take antique books, vintage books, fun books, and transform them into journals that people can use to write in, or draw in, or paint in, or collage in. Um, it's just endless what they can do um, with the journals that I create. Uh, these are uh, a few of recent ones that I made from uh, dictionaries from the 1950s. These were four dictionaries I found at a local thrift store because my favorite source for finding old and unusual books is, and all of my gear actually, is secondhand sources. Charity shops, thrift stores, antique sales, yard sales, um, garage sales, online second-hand sources. Um, a lot of people know what I do, and I actually will get contacted by friends and family and that saying, hey, I've got this, would you like it? And usually I do. <laughs> so I, all these fun things that you see have come from somewhere else. They've been previously loved. And then I compile them together and I create, um, I create journals. And I love what I do. So I gut the book. I take out the original text block. And I put in a new text block that I've created from repurposed papers that sometimes come from other books. Sometimes they are papers that I have tea dyed or had other fun with. Then I will hand sew a new text block together, new to the book, and I bind it with a hidden hollowback spine method. And then it starts its new life as someone's journal. I try my best to put some of the original things back into the book. For example, this is the first the first page of the original text block, and that shows that this book was from 1951. This was an original little sticker that was in the back. I put in new, new to the book end papers, and then I love using pages from other older books. This is from a 1937 shorthand text. Uh, laces come from thrifted sources, old calendars, um, and there's just little fun things to open up and discover and little places for writing in. It's, it's just a whole lot of fun to make and uh, a whole lot of fun to to fill for the other, uh, the new owners. And I always do check in case you're worried that I, um, I might inadvertently um, destroy a, a valuable book. I always do check because um, that, that's something I would not want to do. But older books that are usually either headed for the recycle bin or the burn pile, that's my favorite thing to do. And then I love hunting down pieces of metal. This was from somebody's door or a gate. And uh, it's just a fun little thing to add on to, and it turns into a closure for this book. It wraps that around, and it closes it up. So this is what happens to the books that I play with. And uh, we're going to get started on a new one today. And I thought I'd show you how I get started uh, when I find the latest book that I'm going to um, transform. So I hope you'll stay and 
join me as I gut my next book project. Okay, here we go. This is the book that uh, we're going to take apart. Um, these are very common where I live. I see them all the time. Um, it's a children's, it's basically a children's school textbook. It's in nice condition. Um, there is no, um, there's no copyright date in it. So I feel like I can say for a certainty it's definitely vintage. I doubt it's antique, but it's old. It's in nice condition. These are very common, so again, I checked online. You can, um, they're available on places like eBay, Etsy, that sort of thing. So uh, again, no qualms about uh, transforming this into a sweet little journal. I really love the detail work on the cover. I'm looking forward to probably just leaving that as it is. Sometimes I'll decorate a cover and sometimes uh, I just like to honor the original cover, especially if it's really pretty. And I don't mind when there's a bit of grime that shows that, you know, little hands used this at some point, and hopefully many a child uh, read and enjoyed it. These end papers are really, really nice. And they're in nice condition. I'm tempted to see if I can save them, but as I explained previously, I am not a book restorer. So there are ways to lift end papers so that you can get the text block out. I don't go to that kind of uh, work to uh, get a text block out of um, a cover. If it seems like they're going to lift easily, I'll give it a try but it doesn't break my heart if I end up having to cut the end papers. Sometimes I just want to put new end papers in anyways. Sometimes I want the cover to indicate one thing and then when you open up the book there's a whole other thing going on inside. So um, for that reason um, I don't worry too much if I can't save these. But if I can um, I will, and I can still make the decision later that, you know what, I don't want these end papers, and I will cover them with the end papers of my choice. So, as I said, very common uh, children's reader. Um, it's from the UK, which is very commonly found here in Canada, um, because we're part of the Commonwealth. It's very normal for us to have uh, books from England. And, uh, and also Scotland. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to release the glue in here that glues this uh, free part of the end paper onto the first page of the text block. And I'm looking to see if it will just let go for me. So, as I said, if I were a professional, there are ways to do this safely. I'm not, and it's not that important to me. There we go. So this is coming up. That gives me hope. No, it's already starting to crack there. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about it. I do think we're just going to take this off. So there we go. Yep. Yep, that's just... Uh... So if you've been watching Kelly's channel for a while now, um, she's taught you very well about the, um, the parts of a book. So by lifting up that part of the end paper, you can see there's the mull that helps to suspend the text block into the cover. There's some bands. Sometimes books just have mull. Sometimes books just have bands, depending on what the publisher liked to do. So um, I'm just going to cut right through it. 
I'm going to save myself a bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself lots of room here and I'm going to use a nice sharp pointy X-Acto blade. Make sure that's in there nice and tight. And I'm just going to use the tip of the blade and I'm going to take tiny little cuts down through that mull. It's going to be a little tricky through this band here. So just be patient with yourself and with your knife and cut through it. You don't want to go too deeply in because if you want to be able to use this spine intact, which is usually, that's my favorite way to do it. I love when everything about the front cover um, can honor what the book was. That's just the best part. So, so just use that tip of the, um, the knife. Normally, if I wasn't on camera, I would do all of this work upright. I'm trying to angle it a bit so you can see what I'm doing. But if you're going to try this yourself at home, make it easier on yourself and just hold it upright like this. Hold it steady. Uh, encourage, use one finger and the rest of your hand to spread that uh, apart and give yourself a bit more room and go in and just nick through that little that little gauze there and there we go so we have the uh, front part of the cover released from the front part of the text block And then the back, the other side, whether you started with the front or whether you started with the back, the other side is easier because you can flip your cover out of the way and you have more room here to, um, to work with. Now, if your book is old enough or um, obedient <laughs> enough, sometimes you can simply just pull that off. You want to be careful if it's an old book because if you're hoping to use the cover intact you don't want to damage these hinges um, that's holding your spine and your covers together. I'm just going to get this out of my way. It's some of the mull. So um, I'm not going to worry about that. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to cut down this part here. I'm holding the cover out of the way. I'm going to use my nice sharp little X-Acto knife or you can use a craft knife, a box cutter, um, whatever you happen to have. I'm sure it will work. It's just the sharper it is, the easier it is to get it done. Sometimes flip it over and start from the other end. See what I mean? Second side is always easier. Not all books are this easy. Some books, the publisher book binder does it really, really tight. And it can be a snug fit and it can be a bit of a challenge. Personally, I enjoy that. Bring it. <laughs> um, it's... It's always an, an enjoyable adventure to get started on a new journal. So there we go. Now we've got our book in two pieces. So we've got our cover. We've been able to keep it intact. And we've got our text block. So I'm going to just pull out the rest of the mull. There's usually about an inch of it on either side underneath the end paper. So you'll find it there. You're not going to need it. Um, because we're going to put new fun end papers. I never know um, what it's going to be until the book sort of starts inspiring me into uh, what kind of journal it wants to be, whether it's going to be artsy or feminine or maybe childish. You know, this was a children's book. I may want to uh, make use of some of the pages inside and put them back into the book and I'll show you here. It's quite um, 
quite illustrated. They're black and white, but you can still have fun with those. See what I mean? Lots and lots of illustrations in here. Oh, I like that with the dragon. St. George and the dragon. Awesome. So for me, when I'm creating um, a new journal from an old book, um, it usually, as I'm going through this process of cleaning out the cover, um, it will usually start sort of inspiring me as to how I want to fill it. Um, sometimes I don't even want a theme at all. I, those are my favorite kinds of journals. It's sort of like a commonplace book. I like to call it an all sorts book because it's got all sorts of good stuff in it and not necessarily a theme to it. So every page turn is unexpected and, uh, and hopefully interesting. I don't overly embellish my books. I really like to leave most of the space available, most of the pages available for the new owner to be the one to make the book their own. I sort of get things started for them. Sometimes taking apart a book can be a little nerve wracking for some people. So, and I don't know what it is. I just get a lot of satisfaction. One of my favorite tools at my desk here, my, at my art desk, is a good pair of tweezers. You can use it for gouging. You can use it for lifting papers. You can use it for grabbing these little threads and getting them out of your way. I probably could safely go ahead after I've made my new text block and um, and put it in now the way this is. It's just me. I just I like to get all that stuff out but I'll do that later. There's no point in you having to watch that. Normally what I will do is I have a really sharp lifting knife. This actually was a cheese knife. And I have a son-in-law who grinds uh, knife blades. And uh, so he ground that down to razor sharp. And I can literally use it, and I point it away from my hand. Never point towards your hand. I've learned that the hard way. And uh, I can use it to just lift the edges of papers and I will usually pull back the whole edge of these end papers to give me more room for when I put my new chosen end papers in. So let me take a peek here and see about this. Pages like this, they're so much fun. I will use them. I if if not to put back into the book here and there um, I will use them to make tags and it'll be the background for collaging. I will also use them in other books. I'm going to have many leftover pages, but I will use uh, some of these pages. will go into other journals that I will make somewhere down the road. Nothing gets wasted in the journals that I create because even the papers that ultimately really are of no use to me, I will shred them and I use them as the packing for when I ship my journals to their new home. It's, it's a fun thing to do. Um, some people would call this a junk journal, and I do think in a way it qualifies as a junk journal because I really enjoy the challenge of creating my books with as much... Um, repurposed secondhand things as possible. The papers, the fabrics, the laces, um, any kind of little charms or that. Um, I really, really like to be able to make sure that I've found it from someone else's junk. Hence, this becomes what I consider a junk journal. I really don't... Um, it's rare for me to use a digital print. It's very rare for me to use scrapbook paper. I like, I like the uniqueness of older papers uh, that had some kind of mystery life before I found it. I'm going to 
putting together a journal for another book I'm working on. Here's the cover. Uh, it was very damaged at the top, so I've done this to... <coughs> Sorry about that. I apologize. Um, tickly throat. Anyhow, uh, here's what I mean when I say that I'll lift the edges of the paper because these are the end papers that are going to go in. And then when the text block is in, this will be a beautiful old book. This book is from 1893. But here's what I mean by preparing papers to go in, choosing unusual papers, choosing old laces that I'm going to be going uh, going to be putting into it, um, refurbishing the spine. It's just a lot of fun. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching how I begin the process of making one of my artisan journals. Um, I will be working on this at some point. I do have two journals on the go already over at my channel, but I will be finishing this journal eventually. And if you'd like to watch me do that or any of the other books I'm working on, um, I hope you'll come over and see what I'm up to on my desk. I post two or three times a week and it's usually just a chatty visit. Uh, I just usually, whatever's on my desk that I'm working on, I turn on the camera, we have a good talk, I get to work for about 30 minutes, and I explain as I go along, but it's it tends to be that kind of a, a episode. Anyhow, Kelly, I hope you're having a great time in France. I hope you're having lots of bread and cheese and wine. And those of you who joined me here today, thanks for joining me. Have a great rest of your day, and hopefully we'll talk soon. Take care. Bye.